Though not counted amongst the children of Iluvatar, Auli's dwarfs had a giant impact upon Middle-earth throughout the ages. During the First Age, the dwarfs would rarely engage in the battles of Beleriand, but when they did, their armies proved to be some of the fiercest units the peoples of Middle-earth were capable of fielding. Short in stature, but redoubtable in strength, the dwarves would overcome the quantity and quality of the forces of Morgoth and even hold their own against the immortal Eldar. To whomever aggrieved them, this warlike race would always give battle. Welcome to our video about the dwarves of the First Age, and the army composition and military tactics which made them the stoutest warriors in the land. Like many groups in Middle-earth, the dwarves showcase their own way of facing the darkness of the world and overcoming it such as a key theme of Middle-earth's sagas. In our world, the best way to overcome darkness is to find someone who can help, which is where our sponsor BetterHelp comes in, at betterhelp.com slash wizardsandwarriors. BetterHelp takes the difficulty and intimidation out of seeking personal therapy. Traditional in-person meetings don't work for everyone, and BetterHelp can set you up with professional sessions conducted over the phone, video, or even messaging. If leaving your mountain hold isn't going to work, BetterHelp will bring their roster of over 30,000 therapists to you. All you need to do is fill out a questionnaire to get you matched with suitable professionals, which in most cases is done within 48 hours. Then you can arrange sessions based on your wants and needs without the commitment or limitations of face-to-face -face meetings. Check out BetterHelp via our link, betterhelp.com slash wizardsandwarriors. This link gives you a 10% discount on your first month to help you give BetterHelp a go and see if it's right for you. It's not quite a last alliance of elves and men, but working together with professionals is the way to defeat darkness in the real world too. The Seven Fathers of the Dwarves were created by Auli. Awakening after the elves, they went on to form the Seven Clans of the Dwarves. There also emerged an eighth clan, comprised of exiled dwarves from the other clans, who became known as the Petty Dwarves. The Longbeard Dwarves, or Durin's folk, emerged under Mount Gundabad and settled in the caves above Keled Zarem, which they named Kazed Doom. Meanwhile, the Broadbeams and Firebeards emerged in the Blue Mountains and built the great dwarven cities of Nograd and Belagost. The Iron Fists, Stiff Beards, Black Locks, and Stonefoots dwelt in Rhun as the distance between their settlements in the east and the Misty Mountains was much greater than from the Blue Mountains. These dwarves would eventually begin to emigrate west in the Third Age to flee the terrors of war. The exiled petty dwarves formed settlements in Nuluk Kistin and Amon Rud. Through the use of sparse numbers Tolkien wrote of army size and comparative statistics based on ancient and medieval armies of our world, Tolkien scholars like Stephen Wigmore and Tom Loback provide us with a good estimation of the different populations during the First Age and their respective armies. Utilizing this, we can guess the relative size of armies that each race in Middle-earth was capable of fielding. The dwarves in Beleriand dwelt in three great strongholds, two in the Blue Mountains and another over the Misty Mountains. Given these settlements were carved into mountains, their populations were most likely not vast but they did support armies. Thus, they were probably similar in size to the Eldar kingdoms. The petty dwarves were exiled from the seven dwarven clans for evil deeds and were a deformed, rebellious, and overly slothful bunch. They were the first to cross Ered Luin and establish the settlements of Nuluk Kistin and Amon Rud in Beleriand. Within Beleriand, their physical stature diminished and because of the population decline, they found it harder to mine. Thus, their smithcraft and store of weapons dwindled. Tragically, the Sindar of Beleriand did not at first recognize them as incarnates and seldom caught sight of them in clear light. They became aware of their existence when attacked by them in stealth during the night and therefore assumed them to be cunning two-legged animals. They hunted them nearly to extinction until they made acquaintance with the dwarves, then discovered them to be their kin. The dwarves were aggrieved but the elves stopped their hunt, and both races set the issue aside, forming treaties in friendship. Being hunted, and because of their small size and lack of weaponry, the petty dwarves resorted to guerrilla-style warfare. They acted in stealth, typically during the night, attacking their enemies when they were found alone. They sustained themselves primarily through foraging and discovering earth bread, an edible root. After so many losses, the petty dwarves abandoned Nuluk Kistin and the elven king Finrod Felagund took it for his people, 
founding Nargothrond. The petty dwarves aided in the construction of Nargothrond and were rewarded generously, but their chieftain Mim attempted to murder Felagund in his sleep, and thus the petty dwarves were driven back out into the wild. The chieftain Mim would return to Nargothrond after Turin slew Glaurung, trying to steal its treasures for himself, but was slain. Overall, the petty dwarves were a very small population and quickly diminished. Lacking in stature, weaponry and allies, they fought guerrilla-style warfare, and if they had anything of an army, it would not have been larger than a band. Aside from the petty dwarves, the rest of dwarf kind are described as extremely formidable warriors. They are the most redoubtable of the speaking peoples, a warlike race who would fight fiercely against any who aggrieved them, even other dwarves. Their skill in the forging of weapons and armor was unrivaled by even the Noldor. The dwarves of Belagost first contrived to make mail of linked rings, and Telchar of Nogrod, trained by Gamriel Zirak, forged the Dragon Helm of Hador, the Knife Angrist, and Elendil's Narsil. The axe was the main weapon of the typical dwarf warrior, though they also used swords, knives, shields, bows, and mattocks. Auli made the dwarves to be physically strong, hardier than any other race. Stubborn, secretive, steadfast to enmity or loyalty, and resistant to fire, more so than the Eldar or men. As such, sickness was nearly unknown to them. Unlike the other races, the dwarves did not mingle with animals, with the exception of ravens, who were friendly to them. Because of this, they relied on trade with elves and men to acquire organic foodstuffs. However, when they were unable to barter for foodstuff, they did practice some agriculture, using a plough tool that they dragged and steered themselves, though they did not like this type of labour. They also foraged for food such as earth bread to make ends meet. Their population was slow to increase, because dwarf women were a third of their population, seldom married before the age of 90, and had few children in general. Above all else, dwarves lived to mine, so much so they often forgot to do anything else. Within Tolkien's Legendarium, we receive little information as to how dwarves did battle during the First Age. We can surmise that because they did not domesticate animals, they most likely did not utilize cavalry in warfare. But during the Second and Third Ages, we do know they face countless battles while being heavily outnumbered. During the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, dwarves of all the houses, led primarily by the Longbeards, assailed and sacked all the Orc holds over Mount Gundabad to the Gladden. During this six-year war, the dwarves often fought underground, within the great mines and tunnels of the Misty Mountains, where it's said they excelled in combat. During the climactic battle of Azanul Bazaar, the dwarves were heavily outnumbered by a great host of orcs, yet they prevailed, routing and slaying 10,000 of the fell beasts. It was a pyrrhic victory, but nevertheless indicated the formidability of the dwarves in combat. The dwarves fought during the War of the Last Alliance, on either side, though none of the Longbeards fought for Sauron. During the Battle of Five Armies, the dwarves and their allies were heavily outnumbered, but prevailed. During the War of the Ring, the dwarves and the Men of Dale held back a large contingent of Easterlings, fighting at the feet of Erebor. All of these battles suggest dwarves were capable of adapting to the tactics and formations of elves and men to prevail over their enemies. The dwarves certainly learned much art of war from their enemies and allies. Formations like Turgon's Gondolindrim Phalanx, the Thangale Phalanx of the Numenorians, or the Durnaith Man Spearhead Wedge Formation could have been adopted by the dwarves. Some dwarves even joined Morgoth and Sauron, perhaps learning the arts of war from them and adopting some of the tactics of the Dark Horde. Dwarves fought not only against the vast quantity of Morgoth and Sauron forces, but also elite units of the Evil Horde as well. During the War of the Dwarves and Dragons, the Longbeards fought off dragons in the north for 20 years, until King Dane I and his son Fror were killed by a great cold drake outside the doors to his Dane halls. Additionally, the dwarves faced the terrible Smaug at Erebor and Durin's Bane within Moria. Despite losing these battles, the dwarves proved time and again their formidability, especially against fire. When the Firebeards and Broadbeams awoke over the Blue Mountains during the Second Age of Melkor's captivity, they settled on the eastern side of Erid Luin and founded the kingdoms of Belagost and Nogrod. They soon ventured into Beleriand and befriended the Eldar, such as King Thingol. The dwarves of Belagost helped build Menegroth, receiving payment and knowledge. The dwarves then built the Dwarf Road, 
beginning trade with the Eldar of Beleriand, though less so with the Falathrim, for they feared the sea. By the Third Age of Melkor's captivity, the dwarves became troubled and warned King Thingol that fell beasts were coming from east of the mountains. This prompted Thingol to ask for their aid in arms construction. Thingol's armories were filled with mail of linked rings, axes, spears, swords, tall helms, long coats of bright mail and hauberks. When the Noldor returned to Middle-earth, Caranthir ventured the furthest east, climbing the heights of Eret Luin, and discovered the dwarves. During that time, the dwarves had ceased their traffic into Beleriand because of the onslaughts of Morgoth. Caranthir formed an alliance with them, and this profited the dwarves greatly, for they learned many secrets of the craft. The dwarves resumed their traffic into Beleriand, but their mined goods passed first into the hands of Caranthir. Meanwhile, Durin I awoke in Mount Gundabad and descended into the valley of Azanulbazar, finding Lake Keled Zarim. There he founded Khazad Dûm, where the Longbeards first built the Great Gates and the First Hall, leading to Durin's bridge over a chasm. Major expansions would follow, and within centuries the realm of Durin would become the greatest of all the Dwarven mansions. Initially, Durin's folk were under constant attack from the Orcs of Morgoth, but when the battles of Beleriand began, Morgoth needed all his strength elsewhere, so it ceased. Thus, during the First Age, Khazad Dûm became something of a safe haven, and took no part in the battles of Beleriand. During the First Battle of Beleriand, Morgoth unleashed two great hosts of Orcs into the west and east of Beleriand. The eastern host was driven off by the combined force of King Thingon and the Lyquendi. Their line of retreat went north of Amon Erip and was ambushed by the dwarves of the Blue Mountain, who slaughtered them with axes, leaving few to return to Angband. Mountainous grounds, like the underground, seemed to favour dwarvish combat. During the Fifth Battle of Beleriand, Mithros formed the Union of Mithros. Two hosts would do battle with Morgoth, one commanded in the east by Mithros, and one in the west by Fingon. This union saw the Eldar, Edain, the newly arrived Easterlings, and the Dwarves fight together as one. The Dwarves of Belagost and Nogrod sent soldiers and stores of weapons. During the Battle of Nenaeth Anuediad, on the fourth day, on the plain of the Anfalglith, Morgoth unleashed his reserves, emptying Angband. Glaurung led them, wolves, wolf riders, balrogs, and other dragons. The strength of Glaurung withered the Eldar and men before him. It was at this moment that many of the Easterlings of Ulfang fled the battle, or joined Morgoth by driving into the rear of Mithros. After this, Uldor led in his men who were hiding in the eastern hills. Mithros was thus assailed from three sides. In this darkest hour, the sons of Fionor would have been slain had the dwarves not come to their aid. Last of all the eastern forces, the dwarves of Belagost stood their ground firmly, withstanding dragonfire under the protection of their great masks. Glaurung and his fellow dragons would have withered all that was left of the Noldor, but the dwarves cast a circle around the dragons. Glaurung's mighty armor was not fully proofed against the blows from the dwarves' great axes, and in his rage he suddenly struck down Azagal, Lord of Belagost. With his last stroke, Azagal drove a knife into Glaurung's belly, wounding him mortally so that he fled the field, his fell beasts chasing after him in dismay. Following his heroic sacrifice, the dwarves raised the body of Azagal and bore it away in slow steps, giving no heed more to their foes, with none daring to stay them. Such a feat proved the dwarves used a circular battle formation which was so formidable their enemy dared not attack them as they departed. The dwarves of the First Age would not only face the fell beasts of Morgoth, but also the Eldar. After receiving the Nauglamir from Hurin and a Silmaril from Berin, King Thingol of Doriath decided to combine them. To that end, he asked for the aid of the dwarves of Nogrod. Once the greatest works of elves and dwarves were brought together and made one, Thingol attempted to clasp it about his neck, prompting the dwarves to pull it back. An argument emerged, during which Thingol insulted the dwarves. The dwarves, being a warlike race that would fight fiercely against whoever aggrieved them, slew Thingol and stole the Nauglamir. In furious reprisal, the elves hunted these dwarves down, but two managed to get back to Nogrod, telling their kin they were attacked by Thingol, starting a war. The dwarves of Nogrod asked for Belagost's assistance, who refused and tried to dissuade them from war with the elves. 
In her grief, Melian departed Doriath, and with her the Girdle of Doriath, leaving the kingdom open to its enemies. Nogrod sent a host of dwarfs that marched upon Menegroth unhindered by any elves, as they were too large in numbers and too fierce. The captains of Doriath's march wardens fell into despair and fled. The dwarven host entered Menegroth and fought its garrison led by Mablung the Heavy Hand. During the battle in the Thousand Caves, both sides suffered heavy losses. Mablung was slain before the doors of the treasury. Yet dwarfs excelled in combat in confined places like mines and tunnels, and thus were victorious. They ransacked Menegroth, stealing Nauglamir with its Silmaril. The diminished dwarf host made their way back to Nogrod, burdened with spoils of war. Upon the dwarf road in the stony ford of Sarnathrad, the dwarves were ambushed by Lyquendi, led by Beren and his son Dior. The dwarves were taken by surprise, fired upon with arrows, slaying many at first onset. The Lord of Nogrod was slain by Beren, as some dwarves escaped fleeing east towards the mountains. Yet as they climbed the slopes, Ents came, driving the dwarves into the forest, from which none would escape. While the dwarves thrived fighting within the Thousand Caves, the ambush in foresty terrain favoured the Lyquendi, losing them the battle. After the War of Wrath, and Calagon the Black fell upon Thangorodrim, breaking it. This, in turn, ruined the Blue Mountains, and with it, the kingdoms of Belagost and Nogrod. Following an influx of Dwarven refugees, the power and wealth of Khazad Dûm were much enriched by immigrants of Belgost and Nogrod. Overall, the Dwarves were a secretive people, far less involved in the battles of Beleriand than the Eldar or men. They kept hidden for the most part, that when military action was needed, they would often dispatch expeditionary forces. Aside from the Nogrod host against Menegroth, it seems the Dwarves of the First Age never chose to send out their full strength beyond their borders. They most likely adopted the arts of war from those they came into contact with, but never adopted cavalry or marine warfare. They relied upon their physical strength, hardiness, and highly skilled forging of weapons and armor to see themselves victorious against anyone who would aggrieve them. More videos on the military tactics of the peoples of Middle-earth are on the way, so make sure you are subscribed and have pressed the bell button to see them. Please consider liking, commenting, and sharing, it helps immensely. Our videos would be impossible without our kind patrons and YouTube channel members, whose ranks you can join via the links in the description to know our schedule, get early access to our videos, access our Discord, and much more. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we will catch you on the next one.